truth tables with two variables. The goal is to show the difference between a static truth table and a dynamic truth table with Netica. The measure of my success or failure will be if you come to understand the difference between a static truth table and a dynamic interactive truth table. This is my goal. I will start with just four truth functions, or and its negation nor, and and its negation nand. Now, a normal truth table, or and nor, goes like this. The logical disjunction, P or Q, is true everywhere except on the last line, where if P is false and Q is false, well then P or Q is false. And the negation is the reverse. It's false everywhere except on the last line where it's true. The down arrow, by the way, is sometimes called Peirce's arrow. Peirce being a 19th century mathematician and logician. So here's the static truth table for AND and NAND. So the logical conjunction, P and Q. It's true on the first line and false otherwise. The negation, NAND, uses the Sheffer stroke, P up arrow Q, is false on the first line and true otherwise. It's the opposite of the logical conjunction. Now, by static, I mean the parts don't move. It's like having toy soldiers, but none of the parts move, like these guys. They just sit there and don't do anything. On the other hand, we have this guy. Ah, there we go. Up and down, up and down. And that's what my truth table is going to do. It's going to have a little bit of dynamic energy to it. It's going to go up and down. Okay. And we are going to go onward to Netica. Okay, so here we are at Netica, and I want to show how to create a dynamic and interactive truth table, as opposed to a static truth table. This will be a truth table, so it will not be a full truth table, we'll get to that. Right now, I'm concerned to show just two variables, P and Q, and the truth table for P or Q, or nor P or Q, or I guess a P nor Q, which is just the negation of or, and then P and Q, and the negation of and, which is P and Q. Okay, let's just do the truth table first with or. So I'm going to connect, and I'm going to connect Q. Now, I'm going to go into its little brain, as we usually do, and I say, okay, well now, and here you can think of yourself as teaching Netica something about truth tables. You say, okay, well, Netica, P or Q, well, that's true. Either one is true, okay. Here it's true, here it's true, but here, uh, here we need to change that. If both are false, well, then P or Q is false. And then we apply, and we are done. And then we compile, and here we are. Now, notice, why is this 75 and 25? Well, that just reflects the fact that it's true in three of four possible cases, 75% of the time. Now, this is what I mean by interactive. Now, when it turns green, it means that I've entered a finding. So, true, and I'll say, I don't know, false, all right? Then it comes out to be, well, true, for the good reason that at least one of them is true. If I enter false, what do you get? Ah, well, you get this to be false. Very good. Okay, if I came over here and I said, well, I know that P or Q is true, then I'll enter a finding and it turns green. Notice that Netica says, well, and P and Q could be true or false, right? It's not clear which one it would be because there's three possible ways of making P or Q true. If I were to say, well, as it turns out, known to be false, ah, it concludes that Q must be true very well. Okay, now what I want to do then is I'm going to connect everything else. So. Let's do this. We'll go here and here and here. And also we need to have Q to connect it here and here and here. Now, that gets to be, that's a pretty little pattern, but all these wires, well, that gets to be a little messy. If we were to do this 
all of the truth function, we would get 16 and that would start to get, well, it just would look like a whole lot of spaghetti and it would be kind of a mess. So we're going to do something else and we're gonna put a little intermediate variable in between to clean things up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna undo this. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to take away that, take away that and that and that and that. Okay, this is an intermediate variable that's going to go from P to this thing and then to all the other truth functions. So I'm gonna connect that to here. I'm gonna connect that to here. And the idea is simply this, that this and this will be summarized in this truth table. So let me show you the brains of this inside. So well, if P and Q are true, then I've got this thing here. The state is true, true. And for true, false, the state I've put as true, false and so on. So I'll set that and here. This, by the way, I simply defined over here. When I entered the name of the node, right, this was the node name, the title, and the states. This is where I entered all four states to correspond to the four possibilities when P and Q are given a value. All right. Now, now what I do is I'm going to connect this to here and this to here and this to here and this to here. Okay, I'm gonna, and I'm going to just tweak this a little bit. I like straight lines, I like straight lines over here. Okay, now we're gonna need to enter the values, the correct truth table. Now that we don't have all this spaghetti mess in the middle, because we centralize things a little bit. P and Q go here, and then go to each of these functions separately. So for example, so now we need to go into the brain here for a minute. So P and Q are both true. Well, or is true. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, false when both are false. Okay. And when we compile that, we have the right result. Now this, we also need to fix and P nor Q is the reverse. So it comes out to be false everywhere, except at the end when both are false, this comes out true because it's just the negation of or, which is why it's called nor. And now we close. Notice that true is 25%. Well, that's because it's true in one of four cases. So that's exactly what we would expect. Now for and, so we'll go to and. And and is true. Well, it's only true when both of, and it's false otherwise. So we'll enter false for each of these and we'll apply and we're done. And then we'll go to NAND. And then of course, it's just not AND, NAND, also called the Sheffer stroke. And we will, so that comes out to be, so when that's false, we know that that's true. And that is, what do we say? That's also true and true. Or is it the other way around? I've always got, oh, yes, false, true, true, and true. That is correct. And so we apply and close and we get the exact result that we expected. Notice that unlike or, and is true 25% of the time, meaning that it's true in one out of four cases, and then is true in three out of four cases. The reason I've put these, by the way, is that nor and nand, either one are called universal gates because you can use these to create all other truth functions. So now, Let's play with the truth table. And let me show you what I meant by a dynamic truth table. So if I enter true over here and say true, okay, well, I get the exact result that I expected. This comes out true, this comes out false, this comes out true, this comes out false. So I could enter, by the way, if it's green, that means that I'm entering a finding. So now this comes out to be true, this false, this false, and this true. What I could do also is I could go I could go here, I could go in the middle, right? So because it's green means that I've entered a finding. So notice now that as I go down each line here and here and here, notice that all of these other ones change, right? That's what I mean by dynamic, that each of the truth functions come out and reflect their own internal truth table. So let me retract all the findings. Suppose that we are told something, suppose that we're told one thing and we're told NAND is true. Okay. Now what's this business here about 33%? Well, all that we can tell from NAND being true is that one case is eliminated. 
namely the possibility that P is true and Q is true. Now, what we know immediately from that is that and therefore must be. But notice over here that or and nor are not yet fully determined. And therefore, P and Q are also not fully determined because they could either be true or false. Now, suppose that we find further that, well, we find out that or is true. Ah, well, now we're getting a little closer. Now we're discovering, of course, that or is true, nor must be false. Yet the truth table is itself not fully determined because that leaves two possibilities, right? It could be that P is true and Q false or that P is false and that Q is true. So notice that all the truth functions are now fully determined. They all sit at 100%, but P and Q are still actually not fully determined. Either one could be true or false. And now we might say, okay, well, now we've been told, as it turns out, we know that P is false. So we'll enter and it'll turn green. And I'm going to say, we know that it's false. Well, then Nerica knows to reason to infer, therefore, Q must be true. And that leaves this last possibility. Now everything is done. So that's what I mean by saying that this truth table is dynamic. Nerica knows to infer, and you can move, you can traverse through this truth table forward and backward. What I mean is, so forward, meaning that you start with P and you could say, well, suppose they're both false. Then it infers to the truth functions what they are, or you can start at the other end. And you can enter, say, okay, well, I know that it's false. Well, then it goes back. So backward propagation of information and tells you something about P and Q. And if I were to add some additional information, we find out, well, as it turns out, we know that say P and Q is true. Then we get the full determination of all the values. So I think that's just very cool. So there you have it. This is a fully dynamic an interactive truth table. You can actually play with it and conclude with all 16 functions. Here we go. This is what our interactive truth circle looks like, okay? So this is what the whole thing looks like when you add all of the truth functions. So notice that we can traverse here. So, right, this is true and this is not, and then P, not P, Q, not Q, and not N, and, and, or, not or, which is nor, XOR and not XOR, and then it P then Q, and then these funny little thingies here, which is the, well, actually it's the negation of this one. And this is the converse basically of if P then Q, this basically is if Q then P. And this is the negation of the converse of if P then Q. So there you have it. Let me, actually, let me show you what happens. If I enter true over here, then we can play and we can traverse, right? Notice that I go really fast. Okay, that's too fast. But we have now what I call an interactive and animated truth table. So that concludes my presentation for our interactive dynamic truth table. I'm going to, the last three minutes, I think, is going to be the truth table set to a little bit of music, right? So not only is this a dynamic truth table and interactive, there's even a, well, there's like an audio component. Something I would love to be able to do, and someone maybe can tell me how to do this, is to connect the output of each of these truth functions to sound somehow. So that's a project for another time. Okay, we are done. Thank you.
Thank you.